Welcome everyone to learning about getting started in leadership and right away I just want to say you might be thinking oh, I don't want to be a leader that just sounds like a bit too much and I just want to say welcome to the club and uh, this might be more about you're just happy to help other people essentially what we're saying is we want to really help you start in leadership you start in helping other people because that's what leadership is all about for me how this kind of happened is that oh wait have you got a pen and have you got a piece of paper because we're going to do a mind map so what I, what i want you to do sorry i forgot about this and then i'll get back in the for me my story part all right so in the middle i'd love you to put leadership in the middle of your page remember you can press pause and play this is not live i'm alive but this is not live uh, leadership and uh, and then forward slash uh, helping and then circle that leadership and helping circle that and then I'll get started again because uh, we're gonna try and be interactive and learn some different things you ready all right back to the story so for me uh, how leadership began was not by thinking about being a leader uh, I was 15, I became a Christian following Jesus. I went to an Anglican church in a place called Ride, Top Ride. And uh, I just wanted to help out. I, I, just, I just wanted to help. And when I went up to my youth leader one day, which I'm gonna ask you to do if you feel comfortable, you don't have to do it, but if you'd like to. Um, I went up to my youth leader and I said, hey, I'd be really interested in helping out. And uh, what could I do? And I thought that uh, he was going to say, okay, Matt, you can do the talks and, uh, you know, in, in youth group. And I, I, that's what I thought that he was going to say. Uh, or I thought that he was going to say that you could uh, lead the games or you could put on an event. And um, much to my surprise and also much to my, oh, a bit deflating, which is my issue, uh, is that he said, well, Matt, what I want you to do is I want you to get cordial and biscuits. So with your pen, what I'd love you to do, you can draw it if you want, but I want you to come and mind map off leadership and helping write cordial and biscuits or bickies, uh, whatever you like to say. So have you got that? Okay, this is, this is deep stuff. Um, I want you to write that down because I want to make this clear from the outset that this is about serving and why I got deflated from my youth leader saying, well, Matt, why don't you go down the street and get fruit cup cordial and a, a packet of biscuits um, is because he did that because he wanted me to start my journey in leadership by serving. I didn't like it. I did it, but I didn't like it. And um, for a number of weeks and months, that was the only thing that he got me to do. He gave me $10, I think, of cash, something like that. Go down the street, get the cordial and the biscuits, come back and set it up for youth group that night. That was my journey into being part of the leadership team. And I remember at the end of the nights uh, when all the youth, and I was still a youth, had gone home and the leaders were around uh, in the hall, in the church hall kitchen, and uh, just chatting about how the night went, I knew that my position for being in there was just being the cordial and biscuit guy. But that was okay. Um, in the long run, it's been really helpful. Have you got a Bible? And uh, I'd love you to write down with pen and paper, coming off cordial and biscuits. Would you write down uh, the book of Mark and chapter 10 and verse 45. Mark 10, Mark chapter 10, verse 45 I've got my Bible here and I'd love us to read it remember you can press pause at any time and play um, don't get stressed okay Jesus says Mark 10 45 you ready for even the Son of Man that's Jesus did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many he says that because just a little while before, I'll turn my page to see that James and John, who were two of Jesus' uh, youth group leaders, they were in his group. They went to Jesus and they said to him, 
uh, teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. And Jesus said, well, what do you want? And they said, one of us wants to sit on your right and the other on your left in glory. That's a pretty big request. That beats uh, just doing the talk at youth group. And Jesus goes on to say a little bit later, he says, look, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the world, they lord it over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must become your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be a servant of all. So everyone, leadership begins with serving. Leadership continues with serving. Leadership finishes with serving. I completely understand that some of you might think that being a leader means being a great public speaker. I understand that you might, and not from... <laughs> Not from me, but uh, uh, okay, all right, but not from me. You might think that being a, a great leader is, is having a lot of followers or it's, uh, yeah, doing something huge and massive. It is not. Being a leader is about helping and serving others. Okay, have you got your pen? And I would love you to write. Okay, Jesus way, the Jesus way. Jesus way of leading. All right. Jesus way of leading right from the get go in the book of Mark is that he starts with his baptism. So with your pen, so I've got cordial and biscuits, Mark 10, Jesus way of leading. From Jesus way of leading, I'd love you to mind map off that and say he got baptized. And um, what I mean, what I would love to grab from that is that Jesus knew who he was before what he did. He got really, Jesus got baptized and the father said to him, you're my son whom I love, you're, I'm really well pleased with you. So before Jesus did anything, he knew who he was. And this is a big long journey, still in it, but uh, love you to write baptized. Uh, and I'd love you to write who he was first and then off that second what he did and so how Jesus helped others kind of speeding the story up for the point of being under 10 minutes today is that what he did as you knew he had a purpose he knew his purpose as a leader as a helper as a servant he knew that he was going to end up making the way for us to be with the father always and um, he knew to do that he had to die on the cross and rise again but before he got to that he, f he found a group of people uh, they went and served and helped everyone everything Jesus did was practical was helping other people everything that he did was helping other people I want to pause there and say this uh, Mike Pilavachi, who leads Soul Survivor UK, whenever he is asked, how do you choose a worship leader? He says, I look for who is stacking chairs. We want to just make sure before anyone leads, they're a servant-hearted person first. This is huge. It's crucial. It's absolutely crucial. Yes, there are leaders today who don't stack chairs. There are. Absolutely. But that's not our way. Jesus teachers be with the people serve people help people uh, make your life about helping others stack chairs stack chairs okay we're coming into the last 30 seconds and so there's one last thing i would love to say and then ask you to do we need new youth pastors, pastors, worship leaders, leaders, conference leaders. We just constantly need new leaders and people to see this as a career. We do. And so I'm asking no matter what age you are, that you would have a chat if you'd like to. You don't have to, but if you would, here's something I'd love you to consider doing. Would you have a chat with a person in your life that's a wonderful influence, a leader, a parent, school teacher, a church leader, and say to them, you know what, I'm not sure about leadership, but I would like to help. And I reckon if that's where you can start, continue and finish, the future 
is going to have a much brighter hope of wonderful servant leaders just like Jesus. Okay, God bless. Speak soon.